This is a 365 nanometer torch. And while it doesn't seem very bright, it's actually emitting a lot of energy. The reason we can't see it is because the human eye can only see to about 380 nanometers. Now, while this isn't a good torch for seeing in the dark, it does have some very interesting other properties. But hold up, let's take a step back from that for a second and talk about why I actually have this torch in the first place. I was recently testing some of my diamonds with this cheap eBay heat-based diamond tester. Now, it's not perfect, but it did get me thinking, what are some of the properties of diamonds and the other gemstones that would allow me to test to see if they're genuine or not? Now, this led me down a massive rabbit hole on the internet of research. And to be honest, I got a little sidetracked and I didn't find out much about testing gemstones. What I did find out was that diamonds and some other gemstones fluoresce under a UV light. So naturally, I jumped on eBay, grabbed myself a $10 UV torch, and started testing all the stuff around my house. Look at the little orange tags on the light switch. That's cool. That's the green button for the laser on my vacuum. Look at these highlighters. Oh, what about this Pop Rocks candy? Oh, that's cool, that's my guitar pick. So here we have all the fakes. So it doesn't look like the gemstones, the fake ones anyway, are very fluorescent. Let's check the diamonds. Oh, we got one there, two. Then we have these two synthetic rubies. Oh yeah. I got five diamonds over here. Nothing. I was actually pretty disappointed when it came to the gemstones with this torch, but this is actually a 395 nanometer torch, the cheapest of the cheap. So a little more research would lead me to the 365 nanometer torch. Now this is the wavelength they use for things like CSI, checking hotels and all that kind of stuff. Oh, look at that. That's where we've obviously spilled something on the carpet and tried to clean it up. Whoa. 395 nanometers is also what they use for those secret light pens where you shine a UV light across invisible ink and it lights up. I found a secret message on my wall. Check it out. But all that aside, with a 365 nanometer torch, it's a much higher energy wavelength we should be able to get some more of those gemstones to fluoresce. But while I was researching that, I also came across a few small articles suggesting that an even higher energy, shorter wavelength light would cause diamonds not only to fluoresce, but phosphoresce. So this is something I had to try. So I went ahead and I bought a 254 nanometer UV light as well. I've got everything set up here in the laundry as sort of testing stations because I can close the barn door and make it really dark in here. All of the diamonds or the supposed diamonds over here. So this is everything that tests positive for diamonds on the diamond tester. I've got the two synthetic rubies. Natural sapphires. These are all cut. I think some of them are natural and some of them aren't, but we're going to test that. Then I have all of my sapphires in here. I'm not sure what these are. I think they're either yellow sapphires, that's a black spinel, and I'm not sure what that one is. I think it might be topaz. And these are all zircons. Then over here, I've got amethyst, garnet, opal, and peridot just to see how they go. And of course, all of the gems that are probably fake. Okay, lights off. Let's start again with a quick flash of the 395. Yeah, nothing's really changed. None are fluorescing. Let's have a look at the 365. Look at that straight away. One, two, three, four. They got a little orange one there. That one up the top there, that's pretty cool. None of the little ones seem to be going off, but there's quite a few there. That's cool, that's just the fake ones. Okay, let's have a look with the 254. Okay, not too much. That one's fluorescing blue, that's kind of cool. Um, wow, the camera actually picks up so much more than my eyes. I wonder if I can turn the... There you go, you get a bit more of an idea. So now you can see that the blue one's fluorescing. The other ones are doing nothing. The, I, it's weird, the camera, it looks like it's a torch, but to the human eye, I can, oh, ooh, look at that one. That one's really fluorescing. Yeah, so to my eye, there's not much. That little one down there as well has got a bit of a fluoresce. That's cool. All right, let's move on. Next, we have the amethyst, garnet, opal, and peridot. Okay, first up, 395. Uh, nothing. Okay, 365. You get a little bit out of the opal. 
And here's the 254. Nothing. The Zircons, the Blackjack, the Yellow Sapphires, and the Possible Topaz. First up, 395. Well, the container fluoresces, but that's about it. Okay, 365. Whoa! That's so cool. The zircons fluoresce a lot, but the yellow sapphires don't. Uh, maybe a little bit one from that one at the top, but yeah, not a whole lot. So, wow. Comparative, the zircons go crazy. Okay, let's have a look at the 254. Whoa. That's really bright. Absolutely smacks that yellow sapphire too. Or it could be a zircon, but I don't know. Next up, we have the sapphires. Okay, 395. Absolutely nothing on the sapphires. Let's try the 365. Nothing on the natural ones. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. So four of these are fluorescing and it's just the synthetic ones, but they're fluorescing red. That's crazy. Let me just turn the other light back on and you'll see that they're blue. Look at that. So not much from the sapphires, but last we have the 254. Let's have a look how that one goes. So nothing from the natural sapphires. But look at that. Synthetic sapphires fluoresce blue with the 254, but red with the 365. That's weird. That's really odd. So now it's time for the rubies. We saw before that, yeah, the 395 lights them up a bit. So now let's try the 365. Whoa, that is, that's super bright. It's hard to show you the difference on camera, but I mean, it's just, you can see they're nearly white on the camera, but that is incredible in real life. Let's see if I can take them off the container. I have no fear of losing these. They're so bright. Look at that. Okay, let's try the 254 now. I uh, get a little bit, but not much. Okay, so the last thing to test are the diamonds. Let's see how these go under the different wavelengths. First up, we have the 395. So we got fluorescence on the little heart earring. We've got one, two, three diamonds in that one. And that's it for the 395. Let's try the 365 now. So there's two really bright ones in there, but at least one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are fluorescing there. The cross one isn't, none over here. One, two in that ring are, and the one in the heart-shaped earring is. So quite a few more of them are fluorescing than with the 395, and they're also a lot more distinct, so a lot brighter than with the 395. We even got three in that ring over there. Anyway, that's cool. Let's try the 254 now. So we don't actually have any of these fluorescing under the 254 except these five, but these five didn't react to the other two wavelengths. I wonder what's different about these ones compared to the others. Obviously a different impurity. Be amazed to see them graded or where their origins were to see what the difference is in terms of fluorescence. I, honestly, I couldn't tell you why some of them do and some of them don't. Now, out of all those diamonds, I managed to find one, one with phosphorescent properties, and it is tiny. So one of those little ones, you probably didn't pick it up before that was fluorescing, actually phosphoresced. So I'm gonna try and get this on camera. Look at that. So that diamond is glowing in the dark. How cool is that? There you go, folks. Diamonds really do glow in the dark. The only other thing other than that diamond I was able to get to phosphoresce was this lid. Watch this. So 
10 off. Look at that. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you have any ideas of what you want to see me use the UV torches for next, put them in the comments. I have some ideas, but I'd love to hear yours as well.